back. The Crickets first performed Oh Boy with Buddy Holly in 1958. Here they are with the latest version, joined by our next guests, Todd Snyder and Joe Ely. Yeah. Well, that rocks. All right. Yeah. When did he record that originally? Probably about 58. Uh huh. 57. Maybe. What? Which of you had the got to make the decision on what uh, tune to pick when it came to this album? Well, yeah. I, I guess I guess I sort of did. Yeah. Todd, Todd's deferring to you. He's giving <laughs> you this thing over here. He said, "Let's do something fast and loud, man." Yeah. We we wanted to do. You know, we wanted to do something really rocking. So. So you got to choose it. Yeah. And did you get to choose him, or did they choose him for yeah, you? Yeah, we, we had been, you know, we're on the same label, and so we, we like, uh, it's a perfect matchup. You know? Well, it sure sounds great. Did you yes. enjoy doing it with these boys? Oh, man. That's the band. <laughs> you know, Todd, you're a little less country, a little more rock and roll. Do you, yeah. do you think that uh, Buddy's influence has uh, gotten as far as what you're doing today? Sure, I think um, people like Buddy Holly will always be influential, because for two reasons, musically, uh, Everything he did was very concise, and the, the words were very literal, and the melodies were very good, and there was a, uh, a, a good arrangement. I mean, he just had a real strong song that wasn't a lot of wanking and stuff like that. And also, just as a person, he really fought for himself. Like you said earlier, he produced himself. He got to play with his own band, and that was real inspirational to everybody from Waylon Jennings to R.E.M., you know? You got a new album coming out, don't you? Yeah, it's called Step Right Up. It's coming Thank out you. in April? <laughs> uh, yeah, it comes out in April, so go get it. <laughs> That's great. You got any kind of Buddy Holly uh, feel on that? Oh, sure, yeah. It's fast. <laughs> you like fast, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Joe, they rang you into doing double duty on this one, didn't they? Well, yeah. Uh, uh, you got to produce as well? Produced it, yeah. We, uh, I was kind of right in the middle of a tour, and so I had a few 
few days in there that we could we could go in and lay down the tracks. Uh, and me Did and it feel like you had a lot more control of it that way? <sighs> yeah, pretty much. You know, just uh, we could we could just cut loose and uh, you know you know just try to get the spirit. Well, there, of there's a there's a quote here. Billboard magazine says your version is the exuberant West Texas war chant this song should be. <laughs> 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 a war chant. Yeah. Did you consciously go for a little different sound? I mean, in production? We, I mean, you not, got so many more gadgets and stuff than, than what you, you know, had. No, we tried to keep it really simple, you know? And, tr and just tried to get the spirit of it. You know, that's, that's the main thing. Is well, I think you definitely Tyler captured had such that. such a great spirit, you know, it came, come in all of his songs that came out. And Was it pretty easy to, to cut? Took a while, but, you know, we got it. Sometimes we, we the easy it. stuff is the hardest thing to hook in the studio. Yeah, we, we tried to keep it really simple, you know, and uh, not, not put a bunch of extra stuff in it that it didn't need, you know? Were you here when he recorded his part? Nope. Nope. <laughs> you were back on tour Magic by that time. I was, I was huh? back on the road, yeah. So you did them separately. Did you, yeah. you did yours first? Yeah. Uh, sent it to us. We were doing our record at the time, so it just showed up in the mail. Right. <laughs> Slipped it on, and you just got the ad right. vocal. Right. right, right. It's like the way Sinatra was doing his duet album. They did, the guys don't even see him, some of the other performance. Uh, you grew up in, um, in Lubbock. Right. You moved there right after his death, I understand. Yeah. yeah. And. Uh, Somehow his parents were involved with your first recording session down there? The very first uh, recording session uh, with my friend Jimmy Dale Gilmore. Mm -hmm. uh, we recorded. Buddy Holly's father started a little studio in downtown Lubbock. Mm -hmm. And uh, got us down there and put, put about three or four songs down on tape. So that was a great thrill. He did it for, for spec? He did it? Yeah, yeah, just, uh, just out of the blue. When, when was that? Probably uh, about 1970. Now, you weren't, you weren't living in Lubbock when, when Buddy died. No, no. But how old were you then? Oh, you know, seven or eight. I, I you were down in Amarillo? In Amarillo, yeah, I remember it very well. Do you do? Was oh, it? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, big, it was a big... Uh, uh, big news. Know, huge, yeah. So. But then when you moved to Lubbock, you had no idea that he was from Texas. No, actually, I didn't. I didn't know until I got to Lubbock. And then, uh, of course, everybody was talking about him there. And... Uh, the first, uh, a guy where I learned how to play the electric guitar down the street from me in Lubbock. Uh, mm -hmm. I found out years later that Buddy Holly had lived in that house. Uh, had, and we'd gone to the same grade school and everything. So it, this is all... You know. <laughs> it gets a little spooky yeah, sometimes, really. doesn't it? Well, it's, it's really terrific to have you involved in the project. I hope you're happy with the way it came out. Really happy, yeah. Uh, we got a, oh, you've got a charity event coming up, yeah. don't you? Yeah, God, thank you again. I, got, I have everything down here, buddy. <laughs> I got notes on everything. I'm having a festival in May on, on uh, March 9th to benefit the Memphis Food Bank. It's called the, uh, it's called the What the Folk Festival. And we have uh, How Ketchum is coming. Folk. <laughs> How Ketchum's going to be there. Nitty Gritty Dirt Band's going to be there. Uh, Kevin Kinney from a band called Driving and Crying is going to be there. And I think Billy Joe Shaver might be there. So it's going to be fun. Well, that should be a, that's oh, great. Yeah. When is that going to be? Uh, March 9th. Oh, terrific. At the New Daisy Theater in Memphis. So be there, be square. Yeah. Help support a good cause. You're heading back on the road pretty soon? Going over the ocean. Yeah. You are? Where are you yeah. going? Italy, uh, France, England, Scotland. You've been there before? Holland. Yeah. Yeah. You got a little following over there? Yeah. I, I like to get over there every once in a while, you know. Do they ship your records over there? Yeah. They ought to. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, I, had, I worked over there in Germany and in England a couple of times, and we had a terrific time. And it's amazing, the people that really know the material over there. Oh, yeah. Some, uh, some performers do better over there than they do here. So, uh, that's do you have a pretty good there. turnout? Yeah. And it's the there. native speakers? It's not, not the Americans there? Yeah, no, it's, you know, people from the, the countries, you know. That's great. D and they get it. They get, they get country S western, the Texas well, rock, and the whole nine yards. Sometimes if there's like a little inside line in a song that... You know, <laughs> right. It doesn't always translate, but, you know. Well, they get the feel of the thing the anyway. Way, yeah. Well, it's good to have you guys here. Great well, to be you here. For having us. Stay tuned for Katie Haas, Kevin Montgomery, and more from the Crickets and Joe Ely, all here on Primetime Country. When Not Quite Away was recorded in 1957, what did drummer Jerry Allison use in place of drums?